We stopped a hundred clicks from Moscow to check our Geiger counters. The thing is, they are all in the green, as if they're in a conspiracy. Still, this amazing piece of news doesn't really impress anyone that much. The guys are all confused as to what to do next. And I... I'm just waiting for answers. And hoping the commander, whom until recently I trusted implicitly, is going to be extremely persuasive in his reasoning. Why the long faces? We are at a crossroads, so to speak, where everybody can help but wonder. What next? Where do we go from here? Hmm, yes. More or less what I expected from you. But you got the picture. So, is your counter functioning? Have you checked it? Yes, it's all green. Double checked it. Stepan's in the green too. We don't need masks here. So, they were telling the truth. Who was telling the truth? Why won't you answer? Who are those people trying to kill us? Why would they shoot at you, the Order's commander? Explain something, at least! You owe us that! Well, I might as well drop the bomb now. The war did not end. What do you uh, mean, what? did not end? Let me finish. Most of our cities are destroyed. The rest of the country is probably under enemy occupation. To avoid new nuclear attacks against us, command chose the only viable course of action. To play dead. To ensure radio silence, the shield system was created. A network of radio jammers covering Moscow and suburbs. So that some radio enthusiasts wouldn't bring more bombs down on our heads by whining on air. And it's one of these jammers that got disabled by the hands of those present here. Could you not have shared that before? Say, I'll before Artyom took that radio outside and caught all that radiation? No! I only got briefed half a year ago. Under a strict, you talk, you die policy. And then had to tell my people we were securing a weather station. Sir, with all due respect, if we can't go back, Maybe we should advance and move on? I have an idea, but... Uh... Artyom, rather than carrying on with this silent disapproval of yours, check the airwaves. We should be out of the jamming range by now, so give it your best try. Look for transmissions from the Ark. <sighs> Do you understand now why we are traitors in the eyes of command? We shut down a jamming station. Shot up the guards, destroyed a patrol train, and ran away from Moscow. Who even needs a trial when the case is so clear? There's no way back now. Which means we have to continue moving forward. Command, what are you talking about? The Moscow Defense Command. Have you ever heard of the Invisible Watchers? I have, but they're just an urban legend. Not at all. They are command. Are you sure they care for more than just protecting their asses? You mentioned the Ark. What's that all about? If Artyom finds their signal, you'll figure everything out. Otherwise, there is nothing to talk about. Do you think finding that Ark of yours is going to fix everything? I do not. But if you have a better idea, then go ahead. Yes, I do. We have to find a good place for people from Moscow, like Artyom always wanted. Giving them all to the enemy? A grand idea. I say, we solve our problems before moving on to saving all Moscow, all right? How is it going, Artyom? Found it yet? There's a whole world out here, a world where we could live. So far, we only know one thing for sure. Radiation levels are nominal. The air is breathable. But what about the rain? So what? You can't even breathe in Moscow. So? Does anybody live out here? We don't know. How will they treat us? I don't know that either. What would they do if they found out there are survivors in Moscow? Again, I don't know. 
Keep looking, Artyom. That's got to be a signal. But we do know we've been lied to. For 20 years, we've been lied to. We know they've been killing people. Collateral damage is inevitable in operations of such scale and secrecy. Yes, people have died. But the bombs killed tens of millions. Yet we are alive. We stayed alive throughout those years. Artyom almost got killed. Is he just collateral damage too? Guess what? Yes! If you have to choose between the life of a single man, no matter how dear he is to you, and the lives of everybody else, all the dwellers of Metro, then there's nothing to think about. Are you looking for it, Artyom? Come on, do your best! Would you say the same about me? And about myself, too. I've spent my whole life protecting the people of Metro. Do you get it? My whole life. And I wouldn't hesitate for a second. I'm prepared to do anything to ensure Metro survives. Even though they'd shoot me on sight if I returned now, it doesn't matter. Too many lives are at stake. Too many lives have already been sacrificed to hesitate now. Too many. I'm sorry. I didn't want to. I mean, but we have to make up our minds. How will things finish for all of us if we start out lying to each other and arguing? We need to be better. You ask me how things will finish. Well, let me tell you, it all depends on Artyom now. If he finds the frequency, if they are alive. <sighs> Found it yet, Artyom? Please, try! It must be there! <sighs> Nothing yet, Artyom! <sighs> this signal has got to be there! <laughs> Look some more! Something from attention, Kulandia? attention! Wait a moment, what was that? restoration committee speaking from the Earth Project base. Everyone who can oh, hear me, no. everyone still... Listen, everyone! Proceed to the rally point. Rally point location is code 1811-79. All right. Area 18-5. Where was that repeat. number supposed to be? Proceed to the rally point. Rally point <laughs> location is code... So one, it eight, is somewhere one, around one, here, dash, the Yamantar Mountain. Area so the route from here eight, should go dash, uh, five. Only like by this. Standing this is our goal. Shall we overcome so, and is all this what you had in mind? Yes, this is it. The Ark Project is a whole city underground. Enormous stores, machines, the best experts. It is the Commander General's HQ. All of the country's leaders are there. They have already started the restoration work! We will tell them that Moscow is alive! It wasn't all for nothing! Everything will change! Everything! Do you get it? A new life is starting for all the survivors of the world! By the way, are there any single women in that place? <laughs> Great reaction! So I think the moment calls for. <clears throat> Bring it out to me! Bring what out, Colonel? Sir! That thing that's been sloshing about in your canteen. <laughs> you think I'm deaf or what? Ah, uh, that. Uh, just a moment. I, I thought my ears were deceiving me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a short trip to the Euros, so we should make ourselves comfortable, I guess. But let's name this bucket of bolts at the very least, eh? It's about time! Let's go around and be done with it! <laughs> nah, go to hell! <laughs> Even better! Oh, come Bravo, on! Aurora! The Roman goddess of dawn and a cruiser of, uh, uh, you know what! That's better! <laughs> Not bad! I like it! Ah, beautiful name! Sounds okay, but the cruiser of what? Yeah, I'll tell you later! Looks like it's decided. <laughs> Let's trick to the world! Hey, Artyom, let's take a look at that map. 
All right, we had a round. That should be enough. You're back. Full steam ahead. Hi. Full steam ahead. Wow, oh, that's shared. some distance. I wonder how long it will take. How are you, Alyosha? Oh, Anna. I was expecting an arrow from a Cupid, but I got a bullet from an ugly motherfucker instead. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you're okay? Because I know you. Just so you know, scars attract the ladies. And there's definitely a lot of those up ahead. I don't need a lot, really. It's quality that matters. Andrei Ivanovich, how long have you been working with those Jammer people for? About a year, I guess. At first, they got me to sign up by singing of my experience helping people. Told me about weather stations and mutant migration observers. I was proud to be helping those. Then, about two months ago, they loaded a bunch of people onto my Aurora. The guards took them outside and came back alone. Told me they took the people to a nearby station, but I knew it had came in years ago. A few days later, I was coming back from a run, stopped the train, went and found those people. Soon they understood I saw that ravine, fed me the usual lies about the spies and whatnot. Did you believe them? Well, it sure seems safer to believe. But then, I just couldn't keep the charade up. Then the security officer told me straight. Whoever you speak to, dies. The whole station dies with him if need be. So, that's how it went. But when I saw you, and then Artyom, I knew I wasn't alone anymore. You can't just keep these things in. Now I understand why you helped us back then. Thank you. Don't mention it. God willing, it won't end up being done in vain. Yes. Have you ever taken a train beyond city borders? No. Didn't get a chance to go. I used to be a metro train engineer. I worked on the ring line. Ha! What a bore that was! Going round and round, all day round and round, and no real distance either. It used to take less than 30 minutes to make the lap. So I kept dreaming about how good it would be to just leave the metro and work on a real railroad. And travel around Russia, not to run in circles like a, like a rat in a maze. Huh? My wife wouldn't let me. We had kids, too. When I'd start going on about the railroad, uh, about my dream, <laughs> she'd stop sleeping with me for months in protest. <laughs> uh, yes. But when Moscow got hit, my Tatiana and the little Sashenka were at home. I was working that day. Irishka was waiting for me in the metro, returning from cram school. So we survived together that day. But in the end, I lost her too. TP. Ah, you know how it goes. So, I'm driving here and talking to Tatiana in my head. See, I say, you couldn't stop me for good after all. Here I am, on a real railroad. A real engineer. Danusha. I'm sorry I got so emotional there. Oh, it's my fault. I'm really sorry. And thank you for telling me. Hey, Artyom. Is there any music on the air? Thanks, Artyom. 
The mood improved instantly. <laughs> Never believe. 
a mere two days ago, we received the transmission from the freaking Faroe Islands, for Christ's sake. And I'm not even lying. Now, who wants to touch me? <laughs> In any case, the moral here is that there's still life on our old Earth. And it looks like we're going to stay here for a while longer after all. But let's wrap up this side track and get back to weather. I completely neglected to report the most important piece of information I have in that regard. The one you're all so eager to know. So here goes nothing. The thermometer outside the studio's window currently says it's six degrees below zero, which is an outright luxury for a mission involving junk, all things considered. It seems that the nuclear spring that's been hinted at since forever by every optimistically inclined forecast enthusiast out there has finally arrived. Incidentally, something else has just arrived too. It's time for an old record I have here. Besides, my dear listeners, 
it looks like we are already late for Moscow. That ship has sailed about 20 years ago. I may be wrong, of course. You know how I am with this. Actually, contrary to popular belief, it seems to me that the place wasn't that great even before the war. It might have actually gotten a bit better. At least it's quiet now. <laughs> yes, in any case, you shouldn't go risking your life. So let us heed the Council's warning, and do as we're advised. Let us not go there, neither alone nor in groups. Let us not go there at all. No driving there either. I'd even advise against approaching the place, because nobody knows what is going on there. And it is highly doubtful that anyone would survive there. And even if someone did, don't really think their life would be anything like... life. At least judging by the sheer amount of radioactive shit the winds are still bringing from there. Mm, yes, you see, I just took a glance at my watch. It is almost time we had a break in our broadcast to recharge the batteries. But I don't really like ending our program on this sad note, so... A little bit of music to pick us up. Artyom, what's done is done. Yes, I didn't stop you from going outside. Yes, I tried to talk you out of it. Yes, I didn't tell you you are not the only ones to survive. But even I didn't have the clearance. Not back then. This is a state secret, do you understand? I've been granted clearance only after our fight to protect the D6. They said they needed me to teach their recruits, because the war was still on. Don't you think I was shocked? What did our people in D6 die for? What did I lose my legs for? But I understood. Because the war was still on, security was paramount. Our people would have understood. So please, do the same. You would have spilled the beans to everyone in Metro. You're a goddamn Prometheus, a messiah. You must lead the people out of the caves. Do you think you would have saved anyone? Remember that jammer? What if Moscow has been found out because of you? What if there are missiles inbound? Anyways, no matter what they think of me, I'm no deserter and will never become one. I'm ready to bear full responsibility for everything, but if there is even the smallest chance to earn my pardon, I will take it. Which means that we, like a runner that tripped, need to keep running ever faster just to keep balance. And don't dare you trip us all over again, am I understood? I hope I am. Anyway, at least now we know where to run. So, go back inside and take a look at the map. Our route is pretty obvious now. Look, 
Artyom, you should at least get some of that fresh air. No mask. This is what you've always dreamed about. Can you feel how sweet the air is without a mask? Or not just sweet, so many shades of taste it has. A weird feeling, eh, my friend? I remember you telling me how you took your mask off atop a stunken otar. When you honed those missiles in on the dark ones, was the air bitter then? Who knows, though? Had you not launched those missiles, you'd probably never have climbed that building or received that signal. Life is weird. Huh? One random event drags another with it, like links in a chain. And you are pulling that chain out of a deep, dark well. The links emerge from the dark water. And what drink is in that bucket that's on the end of the chain? That's a mystery. That's what I often think about when facing a choice. You can't drop the chain either. You always have to drink from that bucket. Well, bottoms up, I suppose. So, how does it feel to be the Moses who yanked on this particular chain? <laughs> Is it dumb to think about such things when all I ever did in life was carry out orders? Well, I'm not called idiot for nothing. Still, I would like to know what's on the end of your chain. Look, if there's no radiation, that means we could bring everyone out of Moscow. It doesn't matter if there's radiation or not, Comrade American. The citizens of Moscow will have to stay put. But why? We're just a short way from the city. And the radiation's gone. Things might have been that easy in your America. But life has never been so easy here. Even now, we woke up saviors of the metro. And by lunchtime, we're enemy spies, saboteurs, <laughs> train thieves. And what for? Something we thought was true turned out to be a lie. And that is enough for them to want us dead. The Hansa bosses must have known that we could live up here. But the public didn't know that. Who'd want to stay down in the metro if we told them? We cannot tell them. If they are ready to make men's meat out of old ladies and kids to keep their secret, what do you think would they do to you, Uncle Sam? Huh? We can't go back. We can't use radio. Remember the jammers? And even if you pull a perfect Rambo and break through back into the metro, do you expect they'd all just believe you and go, Yes, Moses, lead us out of this Egypt? Can you even imagine the death toll? Take your average station dwellers. Even if the Hansa guards didn't shoot them, how far would they get? Right to the nearest mutant den, most likely. We are safe here, speeding along on this Eastern Express. They are not as lucky. Not at all. Well, what if there was a proper evacuation? <laughs> and who would do that? Hans's people? The ones that kept us under lock and key for 20 years? Or, or us too? Besides, getting the people out of Moscow is not the end of it. You have to settle them somewhere, provide food. No, brother. I do get where you're coming from. But this matter is way more complex than it seems. I guess you're right. All this clean air went to my head. So, wait, does this mean the Colonel was in the know? His rank does seem to suggest that. Besides, he led negotiations with Hansa. Where would we be without them after the D6 debacle? They gave us weapons and recruits to replenish our losses. We, on the other hand, our competence does not stretch beyond thinking cozy thoughts and keeping the fools in the metro from killing each other off. Remember, if not us, then who? You are too smart for your own good, idiot. Hey, Demir, I've been thinking. How far are we gonna go? No masks needed, the railroad runs through the whole country. <clears throat> as far as we want, I reckon. 
As for Yamandao, it's about 2,000 clicks away. No, I, I mean, how far can we get with the fuel we have? What's this machine's mileage? Aha, that! Uh, yeah, it certainly is a coal guzzler, this thing. But then again, there should be coal stores at every station. And if we don't find any, we could still burn firewood. Why the long face, Demir? I, you see, I made a mistake of stocking up on filters. While I could have gotten a whole bunch of MREs for the same ammo, or, or a new hazard suit, I wish I'd known there'd be no need for them. The Corporal sold them way too hard, that bastard. <laughs> Get them while they last. He even gave me a book as a free extra. Quotations from Charman Mao... Uh, 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 do you know this writer? Uh, Mao? Anyway, here I am like a fool with the stupid book and the filters. Well, we could really use that Milgrade ammo now. <laughs> you, you never know who or what we might meet. That is что? You're not giving the book enough credit. At the very least, it contains a whole world of wisdom on fighting the war against the imperialism. Which we might encounter on the way, even though so far we just seem to be fighting our own. Yeah, Anna's pulling no punches this time. Perhaps she shouldn't have. It's not like the Colonel understands everything. Hmm, who is in the right here? Uh, whoever's not wrong, obviously. Well, who's not wrong then? He who does nothing and says nothing too. Give me a break. Who is in the right now? Everybody is, brother. And nobody. Uh, I shouldn't have asked. I am not bothered when I'm not understood. I am bothered when I don't understand. You still holding on to life? I'm done for, my friend. But at least I died protecting my friends. Shut up, you fool. By the way, Uncle Sam, your command of Russian is quite good. Another 40 years or so, and you'd go completely native. Isn't it confusing now, though? If your California is still around, you became a Russian for nothing. By the way, if we meet the occupying forces, whose side will you be on, Sam? Ours? Or theirs. Not funny. But if the war is still not over, does that make us enemies? Nah, that's not what I meant. The colonel told me to stop smoking shroom, but uh, isn't a pipe of peace an exception? Eh? <laughs> I wish we could smoke one in California, my man. That would be so much fun. <laughs> oh. Oh, damn. Hey, do you miss home? I don't know. Really, I got used to it. But now I learned my folks might be alive, and I'm in a daze. I see. What I meant was, even though you're an American, you're our man! I'm a Spartan, Alyosha. Now and forever. You're a Spartan, too. This is what we are now. <laughs> I wonder what they'd think of me at this Supreme HQ, though. Ah, drop it. We'll all stand with you, like with Anna and Artyom, like when the Colonel protected you from that crowd. Yeah, there were women and old guys and kids. They all wanted it. I didn't even want to resist even though I was younger and stronger back then. Sam, the war was really on back then. Your missiles had only just fallen on us, just like ours on your home. So forget that shit about the HQ. You're a Spartan, one of us. That's it. Thank you, Colonel. Sir. So, we're going to the Urals. I'd love to see San Diego, though. Even in a dream. There's this 
Uh, little whorehouse on its red Noi Boulevard station I'd like to see. Even if it was just in a dream. Look, I'll catch some shut eye if you don't mind. <laughs> of course, get some sleep. Yeah, besides, uh, in a dream, it's definitely cheaper. He's a bit better, I think. Hey, Artyom, was there anything from America on the radio? I'm just starting to realize that it's still there. A strange feeling. I did say my goodbyes back then, 20 years ago. I got used to it. But now, some of my relatives might be alive. They definitely think I'm dead, though. My old man, he'd be no more than 70 now. Well, if you hear some English, they're in San Diego, California. Sorry for interrupting you. Let him rest. I'll stay here just in case. So, how did you like that fresh air? Out of this world, isn't it? to me whether it was intended or not that our colonel now has a goal to strive for because of you. We all remember the way you fought back in D6, so no matter what lies ahead, we're with you. You can count on us. Yeah, yes. As for me, I'm running a little inventory check. Yeah, it is kind of cramped in here. Yeah, I'm thinking of making something of a workbench. So that's all the instruments we get, and everything else would be within arm's reach. With no workbench, you just lose small components. We'll use this place to work on the weapons, cleaning, oiling, keep out of everybody's way, and keep them from messing with my stuff. Ah, well, we'll have to take turns, of course, but we'll manage. So, if you find any weapons you'd like to keep, I'll store them for you here on the Aurora, and you can come back to exchange them. You'll get them back in their best shape ever, don't you doubt. Ah, boy, have 
I cleaned and oiled a lot of weapons in my life. Hmm, factory and homemade too. Some of those were just amazing, so unusual. So, if you have any weapon-related questions, I'm your man. And weapons, they are like girls. They need attention. You clean your weapon well, you oil it, you check the ammo, because these dirty ammo caps do get rusty sometimes. But if you put your heart into it, the weapon never fails. Ah, well, I'll just finish oiling this one, then start on another. Well, hello there, Tom. You people could have called me up there to drink to Aurora. I still think Beelzebub was a better name. <laughs> uh, by the way, did you come to trade places with me? Or did you just want some exercise? I heard that. Monotonous labor calms you. Well, it's no lie. I do feel this calm, you see? Idiot says it's dynamic meditation. That philosopher doesn't come here to meditate often. Well, help yourself. Because, frankly speaking, I'm a bit tired here. The only good thing about this job is that you forget it's winter. <laughs> if only you didn't have to pay for this comfort later, with your whole body aching. That's all? Okay. I'll take it from here. Artyom, look at the map. Now that we know where we're going, it makes sense. <laughs> 